Hi, and welcome to Accelerate Presents. I'm Pete Coirello, and joining me as always today is Dave Pizorin. Hi, Dave. Hey, Pete. Today is part nine in our series on the tour of the Microsoft System Center Service Manager Console. Part nine is going to cover the data warehouse workspace. And just remember that you can learn more about service manager implementation and training at Accelerate.com. Over to you, Dave. Hey, thanks, Pete. Wow, part, uh, we're getting towards the end here. You're hanging in here long enough. i got to tell you, it's, uh, it's a lot to go over. There's a lot to cover, but, you know, I think with the service manager, the views work the climb. You, you'll start to see right out of the box with its instant CMDB, with its basic workmanlike workflows, um, that it does a unit of work that's necessary. It integrates your system center service manager suite, um, and it provides some basic workhouse functionality that's been missing and integration across the suite that's been missing and much needed. I gotta tell you, you won't see it in this series, but when you see the whiz bang out of some of the extension solutions, the GRC management pack, um, the service manager dashboard, and the partner solutions like the Bay Dynamics Cube, etc., man, it'll, it, you start to really get excited about the product. I know I have. So let's get right in here to the data warehouse and reporting workspace. We've walked just about this entire console. This workspace does not populate. You do not see these two wonder bars, the data warehouse or reporting until you have registered um, the Service Manager Console with the Data Warehouse. Once that registration is complete and the Data Warehouse jobs that get spun up uh, uh, as a result complete, these will then be populated. These two wunderbars will show up in the associated workspace. It's important to understand that, that this is sort of out of the box. It's out of the box functionality that doesn't uh, 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 populate until you finish configuring. So in the data warehouse uh, space, you've got data warehouse jobs and you've got management packs. You can also get security. The data warehouse has its own run as and accounts and user roles. That's important to understand because if you set security up the administration pane um, and roles, you may think you're done. You've got to make sure, especially if you run into issues with um, reporting and, uh, and that sort of stuff, um, make sure that the proper rights are assigned uh, there. Okay. So data warehouse jobs, we, we took these and we want to show you here. They're just listed here um, and defined. These are you know, some jobs. These are actually going. You can see the status of the job. These go and do things against the data warehouse. Yet. Here's the management pack sync job, for example. There's grooming jobs, ETL jobs, uh, the normal gamut for data warehouse. Uh, you, can, you can look for these further, but there's the definition. Um, Below data warehouse jobs are the, the management packs. Um, so we've seen this a little bit earlier. We saw management packs defined. You can have a look at those there. Um, and there's more where that came from. And oh boy, aren't you happy to see these as well? And oh my gosh, for golly, you got uh, the four pages of that. We wanted to just uh, show you that there. Okay. So. Um, Security, run as accounts, you know, so you want certain services, etc. to run as a certain user. Well, that's where you define that. Um, make sure that's correct. And then the user roles associated with the data warehouse are reporting users and administrators for the data warehouse. Important again, those are defined properly and associated with the right Active Directory uh, individual accounts in order for things to work correctly. And that is it for the data warehouse.